thanks. Um, my name is Lukas Luba. I work for ARM in the kernel power team. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, some work regarding the energy model and, uh, and our plans for this. Uh, so here is the agenda. Um, we have uh, energy model and EIS for quite a while, but we have some issues, um, mostly because of the recent changes for the topology in SOC. So we get um, a real tri-gear systems where we have a real big core and then some mid cores and little cores. And those, they are uh, behaving differently with the old models that we have. So this is um, an improvement to, to tackle this issue. So what we have now, the current energy model is a constant uh, array which holds the frequency, power, and cost uh, for the EAS. And uh, those, uh, those values are used for the decision uh, for the EAS to, to place the task in the most optimal way. And there is one energy model for each performance domain. And the performance domain is, for instance, uh, a little cluster or a mid cluster or a big, big cluster. We have some uh, pre-computed cost in there to speed up some EAS calculation. And uh, we've done some improvements recently, uh, step by step, uh, like increasing the resolution in the cost field, then uh, increasing the resolution from milliwatts to microwatts in the power field, and recently removing some margin in the EAS when we compare um, a task placement and we consider the brief CPU and the next CPU and there was a 6% margin. Uh, so we removed that as well. And why? Because those the, the real tri gears, they have really close uh, power performance curves that I will show you uh, in some next slides. So we are, we are trying to make um, the model better reflecting the, that uh, overlapping area between those two cores, the big and the mid. Uh, and here is uh, how EIS uses the energy model. So when the task wake up, uh, we try to evaluate uh, each, uh, from each performance domain uh, less loaded CPU, less utilized CPU. And we use the energy model to uh, to get uh, the clue of how much it would cost to put the task in such a performance domain. Uh, but this is not ideal world, world because the, the real hardware actually is more dynamic and the energy, the power of the, of the CPU can change. And one of the reasons that it can change is because of the temperature of the whole SOC. And here is, the, um, here is the explanation between the power and temperature. So uh, the total power that we can measure on the CPU uh, using some energy counters, for instance, uh, it, it's, uh, it's uh, actually a, there is a split between uh, dynamic power and static power. That uh, static power is not that big with the newest uh, technology, but it can vary. Uh, between the cores and the, the big cores, the more performance cores, they are um, built with different goals uh, to not power efficient, but to have a, a higher frequency and, and better performance. So they leak more. And, and here is also the relation uh, between the increase of temperature by 20 degrees, then we actually increase by two times that leakage contribution. And we, if we know that, um, we actually can uh, derive the new power performance curve for that core. And uh, this is uh, the relation uh, when the, the big core actually uh, runs at normal temperature or if it runs at some hot temperature because there is a heat generated by the GPU and the, the CPU uh, has increased the temperature by 20 or 30 degrees uh, more than normal. So normal, I mean, uh, running some benchmark that we derive the energy model. 
based on the, the, the tests and experiments. So if the curve shifts uh, up, goes up, then we actually can leverage that because we have another CPU in, in that SOC, which is the mid core. And, and here is uh, actually uh, a chunk of those two curves when they actually overlap the mid core and the big core. And also uh, that there are those curves uh, actually uh, with increased temperature. So when the mid core is hot as well. And as you can see, the mid core, the, the green line, uh, the, the green curve is not that uh, affected like the big one. So there is a potential area where we actually can put a task in different way, if we know this. And here is some experimental uh, results that I've made. And um, it shows that in some recent phone, when the GPU actually is loaded around one watt or 1.5 watts, we increase the CPU temperature by around 20 degrees versus the normal temperature of that CPU running that workload. And it affects the power usage of the big by plus 15 to 18.5% versus the mid core actually running the same workload uh, is affected less five to eight percent so then there is a need uh, to adjust the energy model in runtime uh, if you play a game for instance to reflect that the actual power performance curve of the big core goes up and then you might consider in a task placement the mid core instead of the big core uh, and here is how we do this uh, we actually, I have implemented this uh, last year and it, it can be seen on Garrett. Uh, EAS uh, has some requirements and it uses the data um, in a RCU uh, fashion. So I have just used another RCU pointer in there to swap actually the energy models and there is uh, some also requirement to not expose uh, this interface to user space or uh, to not affect some other frameworks like thermal, but only uh, influence the scheduler, the EAS. And, and that's why we have this RCU uh, mechanism and we can change actually the values in, in runtime uh, from, for instance, a kernel module, a, a vendor module which is aware of these changes of the temperature and the conditions of the chip. Um, and then EAS will just benefit from the new power field and the new power, uh, new cost uh, field values to evaluate uh, during the, the task placement. So that should be quite safe mechanism from, from the scheduler point of view, but there are some drawbacks. Uh, so we actually manage the memory inside the framework. Uh, so you cannot just plug in the module and memory and because that might disappear. So we actually own the memory inside the framework and we populate um, one, for every frequency we populate the values and we use that callback uh, to get the new power value for each frequency. Uh, it takes uh, around 10 microseconds uh, at the big core running at uh, 1 gigahertz to uh, update that value, that, that actually the whole array. Uh, but it's a quite safe mechanism and actually there is no uh, limits like uh, for, for double buffer and some concurrent writers, uh, etc. And there are some other requirements uh, for this actually feature because it opens some new possibilities, not only to adjust the energy model due to temperature change, but also uh, because it's, it can be changed after the, the boot is finished, you can plug in a new model um, because you, you have some limitation in, in normal code in the OPP framework 
and dt to calculate the energy model, you can just easily exchange those values. Uh, the second point is uh, there is some uh, chip lottery. So if you are lucky, you get uh, some nice uh, chip which leaks less, but uh, the same phone can be actually affected by some binning. So the chip can leak a bit more. But the module can be loaded and actually EAS might be aware of that, that uh, those new values for this phone are present. So that's the second. And the third one, actually, we can also use this interface to optimize some uh, workloads and to influence EAS uh, via energy model for better utilizing the, the hardware resources during, for instance, the game or, or re video recording or web browsing, because that's also possible. Um, oh, that's, that's all that I have. There is a plan to send RFC to the list uh, soon, so we could discuss there if, if you have some requirements regarding this API we can discuss there. There is no plan to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Is that a quick uh, point, uh, comment on the last point, if you go back one slide. Uh, yes. Where, uh, using the energy model for different use cases. This just feels like an abuse of trying to place tasks by faking values for the energy model to kind of push threads one way or another instead of actually being a real energy model. It becomes another policy tuning thing. And I see well, Mm -hmm. Some people kind of abuse it that way. So that's the one thing I don't like about this. Everything else seems pretty good. Uh, well, we cannot prevent that. If you open that API, um, it can be just used. But another question is, what is the real power value that has to be stored in there? While the, the CPU can drain different power, it depends on the workload that it is running. So if you have some heavy... Um, a CMIT floating point computation. It's totally different than, for instance, some lightweight um, text or or some text compression. Capture, right? And then we should take that into account. Not yeah. So, case where they're kind of guessing. Dietmar wants to say something. That's uh, exactly what we want to talk about tomorrow when it comes to uh, in the problems we have with the energy model. Um, but you can see what uh, Lukas said here. At, uh, we can change the EM runtime. We can change the EM energy model at runtime already uh, with this patch. But what we really want to do is to um, to uh, constantly change the input for the energy model. So you have, or you have one energy model, but all the input you were just saying should essentially influence the in, in, uh, energy model dynamically during runtime. Exactly. Instruction is, is one thing, yes, but uh, you can see this as like a like a, a cheap implementation, but the, the real thing will take much more time and uh, thinking to get it right. Yes, yes. So, uh, so that's the energy model discussion. Yeah, of course, I'll come and then you can see. So this started as an improvement like a step-by-step, step, as I said at the beginning, we first um, increased the resolution inside the cost field, then inside the power field. Then we removed the margin, the 6% margin. All of this is around the, the constant EM. Now we try to reflect uh, better the reality of the leakage, which has some impact, especially for this mid versus big cores. But the, yeah, the, the big goal for us would be, uh, like Dietmar said, it would be discussion tomorrow because the energy model is actually one dimensional. It doesn't reflect the reality. So the, the issue, we know the issues, but we cannot uh, tackle them at once. This is my one point is I like completely agree with what you're trying to do. Makes complete sense. Just the interface you're giving is the part where I'm like, Maybe there's a better way to do it where it can't be abused, that's all. Uh, yeah, but so there's a third point here on that slide. Uh, we actually, if we open that floodgate, we cannot prevent this, right? If, if they would like. I have some thoughts on it, but. Sorry, okay. could you guys 
um, slowly the official time is over. And you know, even though your last okay. speaker, I respect the time that we had. Yeah. So thank you sure. very much. Thank you. Um, thank you all for having attended. There is a BOF tomorrow, so don't forget that. Um, it, remind me, it, it, um, John, the time again is? Sorry, bad memory here. Is it noon, I think? So, okay, so there's a BOF tomorrow at noon. Um, so if there are any topics that you want to discuss, like, for example, this one, um, that need to be picked up tomorrow, there will be um, ample time for that. All right, thank you again all for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.